Hello and welcome to Kedrick Farms. We're back with another episode of UMRV, Upper Mississippi River Valley, and we are actually still uh, dealing with winter here. We've got a fair amount of snow that just came in overnight. I'm trying to work my way through it. I just dropped off of the last load of TMR that we've got mixed up here in the silo. We better turn these lights off before the battery drains. And we need to figure out how to get some more silage in here. I've got a little bit of hay left that we had purchased in the previous episode, but we're out of silage right now. And I've got two more bags of silage over here on the far side of the farm. So we're going to go ahead and get this 7810 running. I'm going to drag the auger down here, I think, and we're going to see if we can... Uh, get this auger running, get the silage over there and mix up some feed. And it's a little dark yet here. It's 8 a.m., but you know, we are in the winter, it's dark now. And I would move the clock forward, but I don't have enough feed in my animal pen. And I don't want all of the animals to starve out here. So we're gonna take care of the feed situation here first. And then we can keep moving the clock forward. We're almost to spring now, most of the way through January. It's been a crazy winter, but we have managed to uh, more or less stay on top of all of our feed and manure uh, problems, I'll call them. We had the uh, manure finally catch up. I've been running the BGA and selling off the digestate, and that's really cut down on how much we had to haul uh, digestate up to town to sell it. Uh, we're just having the BGA sell it now, which is working out really well for us. I'm going to go ahead and roll this thing up here into the clearing a little bit more. Looks like we're stuck now. That's why we brought the tractor out here. I didn't think I could make it all the way up to the farmyard just running the auger but we've got enough room now that I'm hoping I can back in here and hook this up there we go and I suppose we can actually just pull right through here and turn around I'm not actually needing to go up into the yard at all now that I pull up here we're gonna spin right around and head back the way we came. What's interesting to me is uh, the snow seems to be acting up on the save since I've gotten into things. I would expect to see the ground uh, deforming and moving uh, as I drive over the snow here right now, and it doesn't seem to be doing that. I don't know what happened. I have been away for a week or so, and most of what you see here that's all tore up was when we recorded the previous episode. So I don't know what's going on with the snow, but it doesn't seem to be behaving how I would expect it right now. We'll jump in here and bounce our way uh, down to these silage bags. We're really jostling this auger up doing this. Oh my goodness, it's such a bumpy ride. Oof. We're gonna bang our head against the uh, cab here if this keeps up. We have the uh, semi already pulled down here ready to go. Uh, I just wasn't sure if we were uh, gonna start loading out of these bags right away what we were gonna do but I think we need to get a move on. It looks like when loading the game at least uh, one of our bags has decided to move here a bit on its own. Oh we forgot to disconnect in cab. There we go. Let me pull away just a bit get the tractor out of the way we'll leave it here with the lights on kind of help us out a bit and i think what i'm gonna do actually is i'm trying to decide which one of these i want to try and uh remove first i think we'll remove this one partly because it's sticking out farther and also because it's bouncing all over the place and i want to See if I can get this out from the other bag by unloading it here quickly. Back the semi up a little bit. Now, this isn't uh, lined up the best. I think what we'll do, we'll get a load out of it first, and then maybe I'll move this auger. Well, maybe we'll have to move the auger anyway. I don't mind having to back the truck up after we fill it a little bit, but I'm not even gonna get under this auger at this angle. So let's see here. If we move this more at an angle like so, we should be good to go. I'm gonna just uh, overcorrect a bit here so I can make sure I get this shoved in here. Um, okay, that's gonna be better. Now we need to move the truck. I'm gonna back up a bit. The ideal pathing would be that I could kind of swing in here like so. That would be ideal. Why is the auger not doing anything though is the better question. There we go. It just took a minute. <laughs> it's got a light on the 
Oh, it's got a light on both ends. It just doesn't work very well. I was going to say, why is there a light at the bottom of the auger instead of the top? But we've got two lights. We'll leave the lights on. There we go. Everything's looking good here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, shut down this tractor, though, now. We don't need to be running it anymore. And we'll let this finish filling up on some silage. This is going to take just a minute. And while that's going, we've got to run back across the road here and... Uh, today, the other thing I want to do is get a new auto drive course recorded for our slurry setup. I've been running it by hand, which has actually been working pretty good now that we've got the BGA emptied out and I can afford to put a full load in there. But I am starting to get a little bit tired of running this thing manually, so I'm going to clean up my auto drive courses today. Let's see, we uh, do have the BGA filled up again finally though. Let me take a quick look here. As you can see, we're pretty well out of food here and the slurry's starting to build up again. Uh, taking a look over here. Yep, we did get full, but I'm not worried about it. We're gonna empty that out here. So I think what we'll do, uh, let me just look at the animals here. We'll go ahead and bring this over. I'm gonna uh, start filling it up again. We're not quite empty yet, but I might as well uh, get a little bit out of there so I don't forget about it. And this has just kind of been our cycle over the last uh, month or so here of in-game time is handling the feed and then jumping over and handling the slurry and just uh, rinse and repeat. Now, the cool thing is we've got this big double gate down here. Uh, that opens up into the back side of the yard, which has been really useful for hauling the manure. And I'm going to show you guys what I've been doing manually and where I think we're going to try and adjust our auto drive courses to handle. And that is coming all the way down here. I guess I can get a little bit more speed going. And then we're going to turn in through this gate, staying nice and wide so we don't hit the gate. And you can see the path in the snow here from the previous drives. I don't know why uh, we don't have any snow destruction on right now. I, I didn't change any of my settings or do anything since the last time we played. And then we're going to come right over here. Now, this is a little bit of a hill, but it's not as steep as I was expecting it to be. And then we can hit both one and two, uh, depending on which pit we want to unload. Well, we're going to actually unload this one, though. And then I can continue right on down this path and around and outside the other end of the farm. And so that's going to be a nice, smooth, easy auto drive course for us, I think. The only struggle I've had has been that I was worried the snow was really going to throw me off. Uh, but it looks like, for whatever reason, we're just ignoring the snow right now. So we'll uh, probably actually just get in there and start making that course here as soon as it gets just a little bit lighter, maybe. Um, why is this not filling up with silage? It's still got room. Did our auger maybe shift a little bit? There we go. Maybe it's full now. It is not full now. What is going on? Because there's a delay of uh, when the material starts coming out the end, it's kind of hard to tell if we're full or not lined up with our hitboxes. What is going on? All right, well, let me pull this forward a little bit and then I'll back in again and see what happens. Maybe I'm just not quite lined up with the auger right now. There, I should definitely be aligned. Did I get snow? in the end of my auger. Is that what's going on here right now? I bet you that's what's going on. The auger can pick up the snow on the ground. Let's take this over to the silo. We'll get it emptied out and we're almost full anyway. And then we'll come back and see if we can figure out what might be going on with that. I tell you all kinds of weird problems we've been having here uh, lately. I feel like every time I step away and take a break from the game and come back to it. Something new and weird is going on and I can't explain it. The cows seem to be acting a little bit weird too. I just bumped into that cow and it stopped my truck and now I can't seem to go anywhere. So I'm going to run this silage right into the harvest store. And if you remember from last episode, we do have this thing set up to be an automatic mixing machine now for us, which is 
been really nice. It's a little bit of a hack, I suppose, but once we've gotten to this scale where we're running with uh, 1,500 cows, we had to make a few quality of life improvements to keep us moving. Uh, I do need to come in here though and re-enable this because I turned it off when we didn't have any silage. We were trying to make TMR, but we didn't have the silage to go with our hay. Now that we've got that all set up, we should be able to start making TMR again. Get a batch of that going. And this emptied out rather quickly. We'll go ahead and circle back around the yard and come back in the same direction we did this time. I think that's gonna be the easiest way to keep loading up with that auger. I'm not gonna bother trying to automate this job since those bags are uh, gonna get emptied out here after just a few loads. And this is just as bumpy of a ride as that 7810 was having going through the yard. I suppose the real trick is staying in our previous tracks and not getting stuck out there in the field. That would be unfortunate pulling right under this auger and yeah it doesn't seem to be dumping anything into the trailer right now i don't know what we broke all right i'm gonna get just a little bit closer and then we're gonna jump back into this auger oops and see if we can figure out what's going on there we go we just had to reposition it a little bit and things seem to be working correctly again. Not that uh, I'm too worried about it. A full semi load of feed is gonna get us quite far on running the feed wagon. And this is all filled up now, so I do need to try and get this out of here. And so like I said, the plan is to have the auto drive course continue around this way and connect with the part that we already have that runs around the edge of the farm here and out the main driveway i think we can cut right across that main driveway to the bga so let's go see how well this is going to work so i've turned on the auto drive markers and as you can see this is why i've been avoiding doing this in the snow is most of the paths are lost underneath the snow which is making it very difficult to figure out what's going on but you can just see that when I recorded this course, I was originally planning on coming into the BGA from the other side. And I think we're going to redo that. I think the new plan is to always come in it the direction we're going right now, at least for the manure course. And so I'm going to have to re-record this, but I can't really do it in the winter here now, as it turns out, because of the snow blocking our view for everything. And obviously I'm going to have to really focus on getting into the right position for figuring out where the overload point is here. Uh, it looks like I might be full still over here. Did I uh, lose track of that? I did. So we're all full. That's why that's not working. Well, I'm going to go ahead and shut that down. We got a huge chunk of manure out of this barn. We're doing really good. We almost cleaned the whole thing out. As you can see, we got 250k in this one and another 234k in this one so we're in a pretty good spot uh what is interesting though that i wanted to point out here while i'm thinking about it is once we got to 80 percent of the reproduction bar we stopped producing milk on these cows so there are going to be months where we're not getting milk production from some of our cows uh, and this is normal. Uh, we have to wait until they give birth and then we'll start getting milk again. Uh, but there will be some more variability in our profits uh, from the cows, which balances out the fact that we're making so much more money from them in the other months uh, because we won't get any money from them in uh, these dry months which is uh, interesting, something that I didn't realize when we were first getting started out. But once I saw I wasn't producing any milk, I got a little bit concerned and we went and figured out what was going on right up on the mod. So that, folks, is what's going on now. We're uh, doing pretty good, though, on the farm. We're making tons of money from the biogas plant still you can see we've got uh, $95,000 almost up there and that is all proceeds from the biogas plant uh, running here in the background while we're doing everything else uh, this is not enough TMR to really bother with we need to now 
move the time forward now that we've got everything all set up and working. I'm going to put us on 60x for a little bit just so that I can get enough TMR to bring it over here to the uh, barn that we've got right beside us is the one that's super low on feed. I want to get just a little bit going while the clock is moving here so that they don't run out of feed again. I believe that this is the barn when I uh, slept through the night and we got into the next day actually ran out of feed. Am I really hanging up on that or is this just uh there's a little bit of an air gap there. Oh we're dumping on the wrong side. Ah uh, well uh, but yeah if we look here I've got plenty of feed in barn A. It's barn B need obviously needs food and then uh, we're filling some food up in here right now. This one you can see their health dropped down pretty low because we ran out of food overnight and I want to make sure we keep uh, these cows healthy because I want this reproduction bar to be moving up and I think that's not going to move up if they're uh, not healthy when we turn the day over here or the hours go by and so we're going to keep them going. These cows are going to be joining the ranks of productive cows very quickly here on the farm. They've matured into adulthood we just need them to now uh, reproduce for the first time. So we've uh, managed to unload the truck or the bag into this truck. So now I need to go ahead and get this auger shifted over here. We need to get another bag unloaded. This is our last bag of silage. So I'm not sure how long this is going to last, how this is going to work out, but I'm hoping we can at least make it out of the winter months. We haven't progressed the time too much as I've been just super focused on trying to clean all of this stuff up. I think what I'll do for these is actually line ourselves up to circle around the bag and go out where the 7810 is parked right now. I think that's going to work out for us. Now I'm not quite lined up with this auger yet, so let's adjust the positioning a little bit. Well, I might need to move the trailer over. Yeah, it looks like the auger's in a good spot. The truck just needs to shift this way a smidge. That's looking pretty good. And then if we're gonna follow around this curve and head out that way, we're gonna need to move this tractor. It's starting to get dark already. The winter months in Farm Sim are always quite interesting. We get not a lot of light, even during the day, especially when it's snowing. It's been pretty gray and miserable. I was actually worried I wasn't going to make it through here with the duels, but we didn't seem to have too many problems getting through the doorway. I'm going to move this right over here into the yard. I don't know. We might need it again here, so I don't want to take it too far away. Uh, maybe we'll put it right over here. If I do need it, it'll be to move the auger and the bagger stuff somewhere probably so we'll just uh let it stay there and uh yeah we're gonna keep moving the time forward here we're most of the way through winter i feel like we'll check back in in just a little while so we're gonna do our final check in here as we move through the winter because this is a uh getting to be somewhat repetitive but this is our last load of silage from what we managed to harvest and bag uh during the year which means we will start having to buy silage bales in addition to hay bales to keep our feed production going uh, to keep up with these cows because we are uh, essentially going to be out of feed. Now, I am I think I mentioned it earlier in the episode already, but you'll remember from the previous episode that we've been buying hay bales uh, to keep us going on feed. We, we came up really short on hay this year. And we've uh, combined those huge fields over on the other side of the farm there to deal with that problem for next year. However, uh, I'm surprised. I thought we were going to have plenty of silage to get through, even with the new enhanced animal system. And that did not happen. So we're going to have to really scale up the farm here next year. I'm looking forward to it. We're going to buy a bunch of uh, additional fields. We're going to upgrade some equipment because we do finally have the funding to do so. If you look over here, uh, our bank loan, we're getting way down here now. In fact, I can pay this off a little bit more. We're down to 730000 in debt, and that means we've got two and a quarter million dollars available there that we could go and uh, 
you know, borrow that money back from the bank and really upgrade the equipment and the fields on our farm. And I think we're going to be doing that here in the spring. I want to get to the spring when it's planting season. Maybe we'll shop around and uh, find a field that already has the crop that we want in it. Uh, and to be a little bit cheesy that way, we'll see how we want to play that. Uh, but I'm looking forward to doing some of that here. Uh, however, since we're now officially done hauling all of the silage, I'm going to park this truck um, back over here in my trailer parking lot area by the bins. And then we're going to go buy some additional bales and have those delivered out for us so that we can uh, see... Uh, just kind of how that's going to play out, how well the feed mechanics are going to work here, and if we're going to be able to keep up with the finances that way. The hay has not been that much of a burden for us. I think we're spending about 11k to buy a batch of bales for the hay bales, and that keeps us going for a little bit. Uh, but you can see here we've already used up all that silage we just put in there and that's going to give us about one uh, mixer wagon full of TMR. And if we look at the menu here, we're almost out of feed again in uh, the barn right next to us and this one is really low on feed. Uh, I'm thankful that we topped off that middle barn where we've got most of the younger cows. Uh, that's been working really well for us. We haven't had to monkey with that at all. And uh, so if we come over here, I've got the delivery point all set up in front of this. So delivering bales has been super easy for us. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get another batch of, or no, I don't want those. I want the, the bales here. We're going to keep with the square bales because they don't bounce around as much. Uh, these are a bit more expensive than the hay bales, though. Uh, I'm low on money. We shouldn't have deposited all that money knowing we were going to have to uh, make some purchases here. So I'm going to take us back up just to 750, I think. And we'll buy a batch of square silage bales here. The full eight is going to run me about $16,000. So I'm going to get that going. And then I want to say eight hay bales is about 11 thousand oh no ten four so we can afford that oh no here we go base price plus options is eleven nine twenty i'm not sure um there's apparently some extra cost here for us so if we drop this down to seven bales we can just afford these oh nope we just got a little bit more money time must be moving forward we'll buy a full set of eight of those as well and you can see they just uh, get chewed up right here by the harvest store this has been working out perfect for us the tmr is cranking away here now so that's great we'll just have to keep pushing some silage bales in here and then taking a look at the feed situation, we're doing good at keeping up here every once in a while. I just take this tractor off of his auto drive loop and we fill up the barn next to us. So I think we're gonna do that right now. And I'm gonna keep moving this time forward. We're almost uh, into spring here. January should be our heavy snow month. You can see the temperature is starting to move up above freezing now during the day, which should make the snow start melting here soon, hopefully. So we have just moved into March here and there's still snow on the ground. So I grossly uh, underestimated that, but we just had our first sale of cows you can see both sets of these you know we got 500 total cows here that sold and those sold off for uh, $56,000 for those calves that we weren't going to use anyway uh, because we want to hang on to our um, uh, productive milking cows here. And so you can see we've been keeping up with the feed and the slurry and stuff off camera here. Our other set of cows is moving forward. We're at 20% of the way towards them starting to produce milk. But we are now finally reproducing milk with the uh, main herd here and that's exciting because we've had to dip into that savings again I bumped us up to a million dollar loan uh, just to have enough money to continue and buy bales the silage bales are running us just under twenty thousand dollars uh, per batch and I need three batches of these and a batch of these to uh, kind of keep going for a 
day and a half or so. Uh, so we've been just buying a lot of bales here uh, through the winter months. That's all right. We are finally into March, and I believe that's going to bring some melting to the snow. I was uh, being a little bit optimistic when I thought we were going to get through this and get the snow melted off a little bit faster here. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, I am getting tired, though, of wasting a lot of money buying feed from the store. It's way more expensive doing it that way than it would be if we were bringing our crops in. Uh, so I'm excited to get into spring here and start doing some field work again. Start bringing in our own uh, hay and get a new crop of corn silage going. I know uh, several people suggested in the comments that we jump into uh, doing some alfalfa or clover haylage. Uh, as uh, you can get multiple cuts a year and really produce some high volumes. I think we're going to give that a shot this year too. And I'm kind of curious to see what six hours of milk is going to do for our profits. It looks like about $46,000 there, just a little bit short of that. That's awesome. Uh, I know we'll be getting a lot more than that the next day here, and that's going to more than allow us to keep up with buying the feed here until we can get out of this snowy season, get into April here, and hopefully start mowing some grass around then. If we look at the map here, you can see all of these are, are grass fields, the ones that are rated as ready to harvest. I don't know if they're actually ready to harvest or if they have one more growth state until they're fully grown. But uh, even if they do have one more growth state, that means when we hit April, I think those should be growing up and hitting our next uh, growth stage. And we'll be able to start cutting those for hay at least. And then from there... We're going to figure out where we're going to buy a new field and get some clover or alfalfa going, maybe a field of both, and really get this farm moving. That way we don't have to wait around for the corn harvest to get silage again, because I'll be uh, honest, I'm really tired of having to <laughs> buy bales and feed them into this thing, even though I've got it mostly automated. it's uh, We're just not keeping up with how much feed we need to make in a day doing it this way, and it's cutting into my profits way too much. Now, I realize that this has probably not been the most exciting of episodes. Uh, well, this is the second or third episode in a row now where we've been really focused on the feed and slurry situations here on the farm. I feel like I've got the slurry pretty well under control the bga is keeping up slowly working our way through the backlog of slurry that we've got and our feed situation is more or less under control as far as uh, delivering the feed to the barns i think i've got good courses set up for auto drive and the fact that we converted that mixer into or the silo into a mixer so that we don't have to do as much stuff manually is really helping us streamline things uh, i think the only thing left that we really need to do is get some auto drive courses set up for the slurry management which i will of course be uh doing as soon as all of this snow melts i just saw the whole layer of snow go down a level uh, so i'm really excited to get this snow out of the way so i can see the auto drive courses underneath uh, where all this snow is and, and get those recorded we might do just a little bit of landscaping back here i might remove some of these bushes too they're a little bit in the way uh, especially the ones right here on the edge of the hill but we might try and smooth this out ever so slightly i gotta be careful though i don't want to drop the corner by the shed there too much and i'll be honest the semi doesn't have any problems driving over this hill right now so as wonky as it looks it's functional and uh, we might just uh, accept that for what it is but we'll see how it goes and oh my goodness there goes all the snow finally i'm loving it all right well i'm gonna wrap up the uh, crazy depressing winter episode here with a little bit of sunshine and next episode we're gonna be moving it towards uh buying new fields field work getting some alfalfa and clover planted in some new fields all that good stuff and we'll be expanding our equipment selection as well, I think. Hopefully, you're looking forward to uh, what comes next in this series as much as I am. If you've enjoyed this series, please make sure to hit a like on the video. It helps me out a lot. That's all for today. Ketterk out.